So let me tell you what you are charged with. You have been indicted by the St. Johns County Grand Jury on the charge of first degree premeditated murder. That is a capital felony that is normally uh, punishable by up to death or life imprisonment. In your case, because you are not yet 18 years old, death is not a possible sentence pursuant to the Florida and United States Supreme Courts, but this charge does carry a maximum penalty of life imprisonment. Do you understand the charge against you? Yes, sir. All right, there is probable cause to detain you on this charge uh, pursuant to the indictment issued by the uh, St. Johns County Grand Jury yesterday, as well as the arrest affidavit that I have uh, previously uh, reviewed. Uh, the indictment and capius that followed set your bond at none. Is the state still asking that he be held without bond? 14-year-old Aiden Fucci accused of murdering 13-year-old Tristan Bailey. Young girl cheerleader stabbed 114 times. Absolutely horrific, horrific murder. He's locked up. Now, I want to show you another picture. Take a look at who also got arrested. That's Crystal Smith, Aiden's mom. Let me read from the arrest report so you know what they are charging her with. After Aiden Fucci left voluntarily with deputies, all right, so deputies went to the house, and Aiden Fucci, the 14-year-old, left with deputies. The defendant, that woman, Crystal Smith, can be observed on her video surveillance going to Aiden's bedroom at approximately 12.55 hours, retrieving what appeared to be a pair of blue jeans, taking the jeans to the adjacent bathroom, and appeared to be scrubbing the jeans in the bathroom sink. The defendant then was observed on video taking the jeans to her master bedroom for a period of time. She's been charged with tampering. Let's bring in, back in, Judge Lynn Toller, still with us, um, this is, I, I understand it this much, right? This much. Right. It's a mom. You got a little bit. It's a mom. Bit, it's it's mom. my 14 year old. Oh, I'm panicking. I'm going to do what I got to do. But this is a huge, huge problem. This is a horrific case uh, to begin with. But now mom is stepping in and apparently on video, um, tampering with some of the evidence, trying to scrub the blood out of the blue jeans. That's what she's been charged with, uh, Judge. Yeah. I mean, you can understand it that much. You really can. But what you need to do when you're, first of all, she has an extraordinary problem that she didn't know she had as a boy who was, had the capacity to stab somebody 114 times. And just to keep him under your roof is, is a frightening thing. But um, the thing to do, mother, father, whatever, call a lawyer early on in the process. And that is the best way to protect your children. It is not some ill-gotten attempt to hide what they did yeah it's not it's, number one it's not going to work number two now you're you're in big trouble too third degree felony yeah yep. now it also reads check out this while in the interview room okay aiden's parents asked him about anything that would be on his clothes from the previous night he advised he was wearing blue jeans the defendant asked Aiden if he was sure there was nothing on them. Aiden responded, I think so. Why? The above-named defendant could be observed getting Aiden a questioning look and whispered, blood. All right. They're not the most sophisticated people no. in town either, right? Right? No. You're, you're in the interview room. Cameras are rolling. I, I, you should realize that. They if you hear don't. everything you say. Everything. Um, but, at, but at the end of the day... At this point, I think they very much believe that their child was capable of this. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Isn't isn't that deep? Isn't that deep? But you know, it's it's how he was raised and how they got into that position of killing, I mean, stabbing somebody a hundred and fourteen times. It's uh, well. Let me ask you, Judge. It's now, extraordinary. this this is this will always be the overriding issue, right? We've got a fourteen-year-old. He's not going to get the death penalty, okay? That's not enough. Nope. Can't but, do it. But right. life, life is a possibility here. And there are a lot of people who say 14 years old, the brain's not developed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. From your perspective, looking at our system of justice, I mean, it doesn't get worse than this, right? 114 times, 13-year-old, right. innocent, beautiful little girl, uh, her mm -hmm. life taken. What's, what's justice here if, in fact, he's responsible? 
I mean, if in fact he's responsible, I mean, what is justice? I mean, at 14 years old, I have 14 year old sons. You know what I mean? And they're they're not they're not deep thinking people. 14 year olds in general, and they don't have the capacity to think out across time about about how things are going to be. But when you have something this extraordinary uh, to say that he can only be incarcerated till he's 21 or 25, depending on what the state law is for juveniles, I don't think that's enough either. I think there should be more of a hybrid response. It shouldn't be either juvenile or life in prison. They should have a hybrid response for people who do extraordinary things with extraordinarily young. Judge Lynn Toller, always great to have you on the program. Appreciate nice your, to be here. your expertise, your perspective, and your insight. Uh, please come back soon. Sure will.